Good day, viewers. A young engineer was having a chat to me and he was saying about how he understands capacitors. He knows what they do and how they work, but he's not too sure how they turn off. So I thought that was a, a little strange. So I thought I'd have a chat to you about capacitors, especially those who are not too sure what capacitors are or how they work, especially in the uh, apprentices if you're wondering about capacitors. So if you're trying to think of an easy way to how a capacitor works, what switches off a capacitor, there's something else that we use every day that works exactly like a capacitor. And no doubt you'll understand everything about this other item about how it works. So this is what I say a capacitor is. And I got in big trouble for this. It actually went to the, the top level of state management for TAFE because I was looking after apprentices for a while with TAFE and I taught them this idea about capacitors. And the kids understood it, it was really good, but the teachers couldn't, so I was in big trouble for teaching something that's not in textbooks or on their slides. So, so this is what got me in big trouble. Capacitor. No, it's not finished yet. Okay, still not finished. Capacitor. Now those of you who are not too sure what it is, then yes, it's a toilet system. But if you consider about everything that the toilet system does, works exactly like a capacitor and hooked up to DC. And at a later date, I'll explain to you about how it relates to a capacitor in AC. I'll give you a little hint at the end of this video. But as soon as we connect supply to the capacitor, we have current flow. So we have current flow coming through. And as you know, that when the system is completely empty, we get a big inrush of current flow and it flows up until it touches the float and let's say this float sits at about 63 percent capacity so nice and quick flow up until then then it hits the float then the float starts choking it off and so then it keeps filling and it gets slower and slower and slower as the float rises it closes off the valve and it gets slower current flow and slower current flow until we get water nearly to the top. Not quite to the top, but nearly. And then the valve is turned off. It sits there, fully charged. And just like any capacitor, and the cheaper the toilet system, the cheaper the capacitor, it does leak. So you can let it sit there for ages and the water may well leak out very gradually. But basically, it'll sit there fully charged until we swap polarity. So if we go active to neutral, we swap the active neutral around, well, talking DC. If we swap positive negative around, well then that's the same as us pushing the button. We push the button, we get a huge flow of water initially because of water pressure and then as the water recedes then the pressure gets less and less and less until it's finally a trickle and then same process we swap the positive negative and it starts filling up quickly again so that's basically how a capacitor works and a bit of a hint on AC about how it works imagine if we were to push the button before the system gets full 
And the faster we push the button, the less reaction we're going to have, isn't it? That's a little bit of a hint. We're going to talk about capacitive reactants. So another day I'll do a video on capacitive reactants and capacitors in AC and how this suits. So it's not the only way. There's certainly a, a, a pump reference to explain it. But I find the students pick this up very, very quickly. And they never forget. I could talk to a student I had 10 years ago about this and now remember how a capacitor is a toilet. Anyway, hope it helps. See you tomorrow.